All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Awesome Sunday Show. Pat here, as usual. And I'm Connor. How are you all doing today? All right. As uh, if you can respond. Yeah. Go ahead and respond to Connor. He hears voices all respond the time. Respond in the comments below. We do not have one single comment. So. At any of our videos. <laughs> no. No. But uh, regardless, um, we have a guest coming on the second half of the episode. Uh, we'll introduce him a little later. Yeah, it's a really special guest, so stay tuned. Yes. Uh, but this is just going to be a quick recap of The Flash Season three, uh, season 2, Episode 3, uh, which we just finished watching. Yeah, um, we literally just finished it. Yeah. Uh, what was your opinion on it, Connor? I liked it. It was a good episode. Um, you know, it hasn't been a bad one yet, uh, counting the first and second season together. Uh, it was kind of... I didn't feel there was as much at stake in this episode, particularly. No, definitely not. But I, I what I really liked was... There's more characterization around Captain Cold. Yeah, that was cool. Um, I I always enjoy seeing Captain Cold, um, especially like this was a different side of him because he wasn't setting out to do anything mm-hmm. douchey. Um, and you saw like a little bit of his emotional side trying to protect his sister. Right. Uh, which it's a fucked up thing to do to your daughter, uh, Colonel Cold. Um, so. What ha- what he did was he implanted he pulled an Amanda Waller and implanted a bomb in her neck. Yeah, you pointed out during the episode. I was like, oh yeah, wow, it's like such a Suicide Squad thing to do. Like, yeah, his own uh, does it to his own children. But yeah, definitely right about there not being that much at stake in this episode because nobody other than Golden Glider, Snart's sister, nobody's life was in danger really. Yeah, nothing like like Barry could have ignored everything and like nothing detrimental would have happened to the to earth one now we can officially call it earth one like yeah. it wasn't like it wasn't like professor zoom was back or like gorilla grot had like a huge plan like it was just kind of like, it was the, the biggest like the biggest thing that happened was the state like was the was the um iris's mother well, was iris's mother well, oh. emotionally but i'm talking about like what's at stake with um was just the robbery like yeah that was kind of like the huge thing and it really wasn't that big of a deal yeah no um i get barry's not really good at pretending to be like a scumbag yeah. Uh just getting caught up. Oh yeah, I'm Sam. Like I'm Sam. <laughs> like that's a great intro to get into a gang. Terrible a gang, terrible but, liar. Yeah. Although he did pretty good at um pretending to be shot when he caught the bullet. Yeah. That was a real <laughs> watchman moment right there. Yeah. He just looked like a like a rag doll the way he was lying on the floor. <laughs> um like Bill but, Cosby's victims. Wow. That's fucked up. But probably true sorry uh, <laughs> if you've ever been hurt by bill cosby um yeah because they listen to this yeah. but yeah uh th- the other major things to happen were um team flash was able to basically stabilize a bridge or a breach to earth 2 uh which was officially named earth 2 yeah and the, like as we mentioned before in the most subtle way possible yeah really um but you know even jay garrick called it earth 2 so now it's official. But he didn't, like, say, like, like comments, like, he's, like, Earth 2, like. Yeah. He's, like, well, I guess it's Earth 2. Yeah. Not really have much of a choice. Um, and then other huge developments, Dr. Stein, before we get to the emotional side, um, Dr. Stein, at one point, um, went on flames, like, he was basically turning back into Firestorm, and then the flames went blue, which might bring um, Deathstorm, who's a basically the undead version of firestorm the firestorm matrix from yeah. the comics who i think he first appeared in blackest night that's where i first read it that's i don't know the first if, time i heard of him yeah it's the first time i've heard of him i don't know if it's the first time he's ever come around right but yeah but like blackest night it's like the first i have ever heard seen read yeah he's basically like yeah he's i guess he's trying to like claim those who are you know he's like the the black uh the black speedster or what do they call him the black flash who uh basically comes to take the life of a speedster it's kind of like that okay um so he basically come and take the life of anybody involved in the firestorm matrix um and that's how the episode well that's not exactly how the episode ended but we'll get to that in a second but the major emotional stakes in this episode were um, Iris's mom. Iris's mom, which who we saw in the the, at the end of the last episode, except we find out that Joe told Iris she was dead. Yeah, and 
Like, she by the way, I lied to you for the good part of your 20-year yeah, life. Yeah, for 20 of your, like, 24, 25 years of your life have been yeah. a lie. Your mom's not really dead. Which Iris handled way better than she handled finding out that Barry was the Flash. Yeah, uh, yeah, and you, but you know what's funny though is like I could I still believe her like that like that's how she reacted because like whenever I have to tell like a woman something like huge I don't know how it's gonna happen like if I like were talk to you guys about something serious like, I can pretty much guess about like what how they're gonna react mm-hmm. but like like sister mom whoever it's just, like I don't really know what's gonna happen like and that's kind of how I, with Iris like we remember we were saying like with Iris like she's gonna freak out and not talk yeah. to him for like four episodes. And she was like cool with it, like yeah. Yet she spent like two episodes not talking to Barry. Yeah. Although maybe like Barry could finding that out and like realizing how stupid she was about that, maybe broke down her stubbornness about things. I don't know, but she reacted better than I probably would have reacted. Yeah. Like my dad would have been like, "Oh yeah, I pretended your mom was dead twenty years ago. Uh, she's back. You want to go see her?" Like. <laughs> No thanks. Like I don't know. Yeah, it's, it was. It was like it was weird. Yeah, uh, it was very weird. And one thing I mentioned to Connor when we were watching the episode, I wonder if before she disappeared um, or left the rehab facility, uh, Iris' mom, that we're talking about, uh, if she was pregnant with Wally, or if Wally's still, if they're gonna go with a cousin angle. Or one other thing I suggested was maybe Wally is the Iris of Earth too. Yeah, I mean, I I think I think Wally isn't Earth, isn't a part of Earth two. I think it's going to be legitimately like Wally West is a part of Earth one. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it would be cool if he was part of Earth two. I think that would be a nice twist. Like, is like the opposite of Iris. But then yet yeah. again, uh, I don't know if they change that much from Earth one to Earth two. I just think it's just more of like what they do. And then, not not so much as who they are, because like the reason why I say that, because it might be a stupid thing to bring up, but like when she goes gets when she grabs that fast like whatever that generic fast food mm-hmm. thing, he's like, oh yeah, we have that in Earth, in my world too. Yeah. So I don't know if the people change or the places really change. It's just so much as like how they act in that world, like little different things about. Yeah. Them. Could be, which uh, something we also brought up before, like. If I was anyone on Team Flash talking to Jay, I'd be like, oh, so am I on Earth, too? Like, what am I like there? Yeah. You know, like, that. Like, am, I, like of, am I an asshole? Am I yeah. a nice guy? Like, do I have powers over there? Yeah. Am I, like, still working at Star Labs over there? What's going on with that? That would be one of the few things I would ask. Yeah, I would totally want to know what my Earth 2 person is like. Uh, but I can understand Caitlin's point of view because she's kind of too caught up, basically just, like, tripping over Jay, just trying to get that. Yeah, trying to get, trying to get a uh, that speeds or not. Yeah. <laughs> um. So then, yeah, I mean, we don't have too much to recap on this, but the end of the episode was a definite cliffhanger. Uh, cliffhanger, Terminator T one thousand moment mm-hmm. with Harrison Wells of Earth two coming I f- out. I feel like there's of- a lot of nods to different, like different things in this episode. Like the like like the whole catching the bullet thing. I think it was kind of a little nod to watch. Yeah. Then. And what we were about to bring up is a nod to Terminator. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's clearly, like, yeah. Terminator reference. Um, Harrison Wells of Earth 2 coming out of that uh, contained breach portal that um, Team Flash was able to construct, um, which it quite a way to end the episode, and I'm sure that the team is not going to handle that well. Mm-hmm. It's um, going to be another weird moment. Yeah, it's but it's the, but is it the it's the Earth two Earbard Thon? Yes. So he well, could, Harrison Wells. Harrison Wells. Remember, Earbard Thon stole Harrison Wells' identity. Yeah, yeah. On Earth one. Um. So yeah. Well, as far as we know, it's just Earth two Harrison Wells. Maybe over on Earth two, somebody could have done the same thing. Like yeah. Earth two Earbard Thon. Um. But one thing I'm hoping, because both times they showed Earth two Harrison Wells, it was in an either had an ominous background music to it or was ominously shot which was like in this episode so i'm really i guess they're trying to convey that something's up with him that uh you know he's not good especially if he was able to find that breach Mm -hmm. like he's got to know some things but i just hope that they don't make him zoom no i don't want him to be zoom i like and zoom but zoom doesn't look like that like i don't know well we can't really tell yeah because um He's got the same stature as 
They all do. They all, yeah, they basically all have the same stature except for that actor playing Jay because he's taller. Barry the Barry's the only speedster that looks like I don't know. He just looks like a midget compared to him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But yeah, like again, we couldn't see Zoom's face because he's using like the standard blurring technique. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really hope that if they want to make him evil, go for it. Just don't make him Zoom, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't like that either. I don't know. I, they might like. I'm. Th- I feel. I feel like they might do like a twist. Like they. Yeah. Like, who knows? I, I'm left. I'm shrouded. It's shrouded in a mystery. Yeah, I'm just glad that uh, Tom Cavanaugh is going to be back. Yeah. Um, we're going to see him more now because he is still a series regular. He's not a guest star. Mm-hmm. Um, which means he's going to be appearing a lot. And I'd like to see what a good Harrison Wells could do. Shout out to Mike and Tom Eats Next. It's a really good podcast. Yes, I want to check that out. It's fucking hysterical. It's just Tom Cavanaugh and Michael Ian Black eating snacks, a different snack every episode and talking about it. Yeah, it's great. But it's so fucking funny. Yeah, because they're funny. such a like, dumb idea. But yeah, definitely worth listening. Um, so I think with that, yeah. uh, check out the previews for next episode. Uh, we're going to see new Firestorm. Um and hopefully more Harrison Wells or something. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break, then we're going to get to our second topic with our special guest. Yep. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, the second part of Awesome Sunday Show. Connor is back, and so is Patrick. And as we promised, we have a very, very, very special guest with us. So very, 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 very special guest. Why don't you introduce yourself? And not only introduce yourself, but tell us a little about yourself, too. What's up, guys? I'm Anthony Dentino. Um, Hi, Anthony. I'm white, and I've been <laughs> playing Pokemon on and off since I was seven years old, and I'm pretty avid about it. So Nice. So uh, me and Pat knew that, you know... Well, we're all big Pokemon fans here. We've all grew up with it. Um, I think I think you know, like I, I'm not gonna say I'm I, I'm not gonna ask what our favorite ga- ga- games are because I'm pretty sure 100 percent that it's all gold and silver. Uh, mine, yes, definitely second generation. Yeah, one of the, one of the second generations. Yeah. So, yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. And it might be a little too hard to tell. So actually, I had a just just a just quickly just you know who are your favorite Pokemon? Who's your favorite Pokemon? Or like. What is your favorite Pokemon or type or whatever you really want to say? Go over why. Um, but then I really the the subject I really want to talk about is like why like what has Pokemon been for you since you were seven till now? What have you liked that's changed? What have you disliked that's changed? How do you feel about the series, the game, and just the just the franchise overall? I mean, do you think that it's going to be dethroned by Yokai Watch, which should be coming out west pretty soon? Like. I know you remember Joe Griggs was talking about that. Yeah, he was saying. Uh, I don't really know much about it. I know it's kind of like monsters in a watch, but like just, you know, or is the series gonna, you know, be fruitful again with Pokemon Go? Like, there's just so much to talk about with Pokemon. It's a, it's an it's almost like an empire, you know. So yeah, it really. But essentially, is. Like how it it's makes you empire. feel. Like, what how do you feel about it now compared to when you were a little kid? So, um, I mean, since uh, we have a guest on, guests always go first. So, uh, Dent, well, how do you feel like 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 who? Well, first of all, who's what, who's your favorite Pokemon, or like what group is your favorite Pokemon? That's that's always a tough one. I would say my favorite three I can narrow it down to. The best I can do is probably uh, for Alligator, Nine Tails, and Heracross. Like those three are always gonna be on my team, like no matter what's going on. Cool, Pat. Um, definitely for Alligator. It's fucking yeah. sickest uh, starter in my opinion. Um, Electabuzz and. Uh, a tough one probably arcanine i wanted to say a gen 3 one but i can't think of which one that i would like like the most i think in terms I, of gen 3 my favorite gen 3 is flygon he's always on flygon the yeah team. no matter what i always have one of those two now you guys pick me out no i'm just fucking no. <laughs> <laughs> what was that one crappy gen 4 cat pokemon that i can't think of right now right. like per ugly or something yeah, me, uh, uh, that was Gen Five had a Perugly, and uh, Delcaddy, maybe Delkitty. Yeah. Delcaddy was Gen Four, yeah, right. 
Yeah, I think, think so. so. But uh, me. Oh, my favorite Gen Four is Garchomp. Yeah. Whoa! Wow! Good one. Uh, but uh, for me, it's always going to be a tie between uh, Alakazam and Blastoise. Mm. I always go back and forth. Alakazam's cool. Those are my first two favorite um, ever. And um, I also really uh, like um, what's the uh, the psychic uh, the psychic EV or uh, yeah or Espeon? Espeon Espeon. I love Espeon. I know it's like not a very even though even though psychic Pokemon have a high special attack. So mm-hmm. Espeon is really good in that way, even though Espeon is not the best EV evolution, in my opinion. I just like the way he looks. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a, I was always interested in Espeon, but he's, he's pr- not that very good. slow, and has, his move pool is really shot, I would say. Yeah, no, it is. It's, Besides it's, that. He's not good for your party. Cool choice. Yeah, he, yeah. Just, he just looks cool. I like him. I mean, if you, you know? want to use one, you can make him work, definitely. Yeah, I'd rather have a Jolteon. Um, like, as, if I'm playing competitively. I'm um, an Umbreon guy. Just always connected with Umbreon. Yeah. I know what it is. Because it's dark like your soul. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not the one with the machete, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> it's for protection. <laughs> yeah. I, f- I forgot that I said that. Um, so, yeah. All right. So, we kind of got that out of the way. Uh, but going back to, like, what we're really talking about, like, the, the main point. Uh, so, how do you guys feel as far as, like, where like how Pokemon has shifted and where it's gone and where do you think it's gonna go? Like you guys know about Pokemon Go, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like so Anthony, how do you feel like like from like from when you were a child till now, like do you think Pokemon has gone, you know, in the right direction, good direction? I know it's a broad question, but it's kind of mainly how you feel. Well I could talk a million words a minute passionately about this, actually. Um it's done an amazing job as a franchise and a marketing or not a franchise, but a marketing business to, to come out and just hit where it needs to hit and stay in business. I I mean, I would say it got the kids on and it kept the kids interested. And I mean, one of my 24 and I just Mm -hmm. started playing gen six, you know, the other day. So the fact that it's been able to do that is amazing. But you know, what upsets me about it is kind of, uh, like you'll go on forums or you go listening and talking about it that the newer generation of, of kids nowadays you know talks so down about gen one and gen two yeah just mm-hmm. from you know the kids in school you know we have justin's a teacher and he has kids that are like oh my god you played pokemon one you know the yeah. first gen that's insane you have those and justin never beat them and justin hasn't even beat them that's worst, pathetic worst how game. dare you teach kids yeah and not be awful at least pokemon red or blue but it's been it it sucks because like we started with those games and as you know seven eight years old that's your mm-hmm. first real sense of adventure you get to choose what you're doing you get to trade with your friends you get to beat your friend's ass on the playground you get to cheat and you get to really be a pokemon master and missing though no? i mean yeah miss, i can't believe like I'm still not a Pokemon master yet. It sucks. Yeah. I still have to pick a job. So, but I I would say um, they've done a great job, and I could see that th- for the future of Pokemon, maybe they've been really gearing it towards a, a younger and younger audience. I could see the older audience is falling off. I mean, it took me forever to pick up Gen 6 because of some mechanics that are in the game, and it, they're really gearing it towards a younger <laughs> crowd, so I could see it. Um, possibly being replaced in a, in a failed attempt to kind of market it towards the old crowd and the new crowd. That's a hard thing to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, I could see something that just goes gung ho for the the young crowd and and like the the, the watch you were talking about the yokai uh, watch. Right? Yokai watch, yeah, right. If that you know really goes uh, for that younger crowd and sticks with them, kind of how Pokemon did, you know, they could control the next you know century or two. Uh, <laughs> nah. <laughs> decade, 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 yeah. Who knows? Century, maybe. But um, yeah, that's my thoughts on Pokemon. They, I don't possibly see it lasting that much longer with dignity, but I could see it lasting longer and not being as good. Yeah. Um. No, really solid points. I can't, and I couldn't even really argue with any of them. Like, um, before I say anything, Pat, did you have like what? What do you want? Like, what do you want to say? How do you feel? Like. Uh, what I don't know what the yokai watch is. Yokai watch. Never I don't know much about it. I just know in Japan it's the rage, and every every kid is into it. It's kind of like Pokemon. It's these ghosts uh-huh. like that they hide in their watch and they battle. 
oh, kind of okay. like Pokemon, but to be honest, if I was seven, it would be the coolest thing ever. Like just the concept of it. It's going to be coming out to the West here. It's another Nintendo franchise. Uh-huh. So I think, you know, I, I think, I think I, it's so weird. Like Nintendo so good at marketing, like they're like intellectual properties, but they're awful at marketing <laughs> game consoles. Like, yeah, I don't know what happens, but cause like Yokai watch is taken over Japan. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't, I think here like pretty soon we're going to see it and it's going to hit home hard. Yeah. Um, so that's all I know about it. Uh, like Joe, like Joe Griggs brought it up, like, uh, and like, uh, to Kame was like, oh yeah, Yokai watch, like holy crap. Yeah. So, we well, didn't say holy crap, but he yeah, would have if he spoke horrid crap. Wrong. Yeah, <laughs> if he spoke if he spoke English, he would have. Oh, horrid crap. Yeah, <laughs> holy horrid crap. So, uh, so what, I don't know. How do you feel about it? Um, Pokemon. How I feel. It's kind of. Like, it's it's kind of lost its place for me. Uh, I like I loved it. I still love it. You know, Pokemon is kind of like. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of like it's kind of like having like a really old friend that you just kind of lost ways with, and you kind of look back and you're like, oh, I don't really like what they're doing. You know, you see him at the bar, and it's like you want to talk to him, but yeah, you want the conversation to last more than ten minutes, but it can't. Yeah, but it know? can't because there's just nothing in common anymore. You always try, and it's just like yeah, yeah, and it's just like you can reflect on the good times and everything, but the problem with the, I just don't like I just don't like the way the series evolved. I really hate Mega Evolutions. I think it really kills it for me. I um, agree completely. I don't like it. Um, it took me about a year or two. I like the initial Mega Evolutions back when they had like three or four what was it? the mega charizard it was lucario lucario yeah. fucking gengar Mewtwo. garchomp I me too Gyarados was one also and then uh, uh and harry cross yeah yeah but now it's just like they there's a mega cool. evolution for everything well some of them look plain stupid yeah um like the one of the dumb ones that comes to mind is mega sableye it's just sableye with a giant gem holding a giant gem yeah. And Mega Kangaskhan is just, just going to bring that Kangaskhan with the kid Lil Rue. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Like, and like they like some of they look cool. Like in Super Smash Brothers, when you when you do Charizard's final smash and he's Mega Charizard, he looks really sick. It's Mega yeah. Lucario looks sick. I think Mega Mewtwo. I'm kind of on the fence about. I don't really. What know I how what I, I think that. I liked about uh, Mega Charizard and Mewtwo is um, there was X and Y versions of them. Yeah, right, there was, was good the... two different types of the two different evolutions for the for both of them. Right, there's like yeah, yeah. So I, I like why was the like the normal color Charizard and X was the black one. Am I am I right about yeah, that? Yeah, X was the dragon fire and Y was the fire flying. Yeah, so. yeah. So like that's an interesting idea, but you know when you just give everybody and their mother like fucking. Mega Evolution, it's pointless. Well, see, that's what I felt like they should have done from and the I, beginning. I feel like a lot of them, even with the Mega Evolution, like their stats aren't hugely increased, or they're not like because you can only use uh, Mega Evolve one per battle. Yeah, and like you know, there are certain situations when you know I'm gonna need a Mega Gengar instead of like a Mega fucking Charizard, but then you know I can only use one. What if I wanted to use Charizard at some point later? Yeah. I don't, I don't like the temporary aspect of it too. Um, like I just felt like I felt like they really played it safe, mm-hmm. and that's not that's never been Pokemon like for me. Pokemon's, would you have preferred that they just added a new evolution yeah, line? Yeah, hell yeah, I would have like fine. No, instead of the a, stones, there's a fourth evolution. You can I wouldn't mind if the, you can only achieve the evolution through the evolution stone. That's yeah, fine. But, uh, you would have rather it been a permanent. Yep, and raise the stats. I mean, like yeah, RPGs do that yeah. all the time. World of Warcraft. Permanent like, I think, edition I think would have like been the cool. level cap of World of Warcraft was like level forty or something. It when started it first came at out. sixty, but yeah, the, the now deal, it's like eighty or something. The deal is, um, it's similar. with just they're rehashing the same game over and yeah. over again, which it's, sucks. And the newer yeah. Pokemon are never. I mean, no, I don't want to say never. Some of them are cooler, but like. Here's a new area. Grand Ninja's sick. To beat, you know, beat these eight yeah. guys. Go beat the Elite Four this time. It's easier every time. Um, it's just... It's the same exact formula. It, it yeah. is, and they're losing dignity every time, in my opinion, because, like, those mega... It's not what it, it stood for, you know? When I was a kid, it was you have all these options, and, you know, yeah, now you have more options, but, like, 
no, they were Jigglypuff and Clefairy. Yeah, they were kind of shitty looking, mm-hmm. but they weren't ice cream cones. They weren't keychains. Literal a pile of garbage. But they had, but they had a garbage. sense of appeal, though. They have an, a sense of appeal. Like they're gimmicky little things, and yeah, and I get like the market base for them. You know, mm-hmm. like the kids are gonna be like, oh yeah, Jigglypuff, I, stuff like that. Yeah. But like. If for me as a long term fan, I get the one or two crappy Pokemon, but now they're all kind of just like getting baby. Yeah, real cartoon. They're nothing's getting ridiculous. Badass, like a, like Scyther, dude. Nothing's gonna fuck with you anymore. Like a Scyther yeah, will. yeah, yeah. I mean, they're kind of going. Looks like they're trying to borrow from Digimon too. Like some of the ones that totally they're coming agree out with, with that. Totally which agree. just are terrible ideas. Like the <laughs> fucking. You know, Digimon is fine it's in its own right, but they're losing the creativity that Digimon had when it first started. They did have insane creativity, and Pokemon's going to run out of animals, dude. But, That's and why you know what? they using keychains. It's, yeah, having a shield and sword, like, Didn't literal like piles of garbage, all. fucking ice cream. Didn't like that. Ridiculous. No, yeah, but, it's stupid. Um, the Mega Evolutions are kind of what... Digimon had when they digivolved, they go, you know, right. Agumon becomes Mega Agumon, and then after that battle, oh, he goes back, yeah, to normal. I understand. Like that. I was, I was never a huge Digimon fan, but I get it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the thing. Like Pokemon's have really been about that, and it, it changed. It. No, yeah, and like that's what I said. Either like, and like, what I mean by playing it safe, it's like I felt like they're like, no, if these Mega Evolutions really like people are like, this sucks, they can take it away. Mm-hmm. Which would have been awesome if they did because like that's what they had to do to keep to keep the yeah. game going on in order to make this time different they had to do something like that was just really like going against the bible in my opinion yeah. <laughs> like, just like rewriting it like here's yeah. my code nah and now like the uh, the problem with the mega evolutions like if you don't want to use them there's going to be times where you have to use them you know especially later on in the game as you're battling the later badges and the elite four and then whatever team whatever like you're gonna need a mega evolution at some point yeah i agree and which I, it sucks because like there's only a couple that i'd want i mean most of what i'm saying is a little it, you know it's my opinion so i don't yeah. want saying it but it's a little biased you know i was a gen one i grew up gen two insane to me even gen three a lot of people fell off stuck with it yeah yeah I, well, Gen Four, Gen Four is what brought me back actually, because I didn't like Gen Three that much. I didn't hate it, but I was like, "Damn, I'm like surfing all the time." Like, it's just a kind of annoying. And I liked. I think Gen Three introduced a lot of really good Pokemon. I think that was like one of the better, like, oh shit, these better introductions. Cool. Yeah, you know, um, agreed. Yeah, yeah. Because Gen the legendaries two, in Gen Three were sick too. Yeah. Yeah, they were. Those were good well, ones. Um, I mean, the that's another. Thing. The Reggies are like, eh. Gen, but to get to the Reggies, yeah, was, was awesome. And like, Gen, yes and no. Gen six, though, like it, even Gen five, like the legendaries are just falling off, kind of. Mm-hmm. Like now you have just like ten legendaries per set, and it's like, how many legendary Pokemon are there? How many of them? They're not are very there? legendary anymore. No, you can yeah. just like, they're in, it's insane. Once they introduced God. Fucking Arceus, the yeah. Pokemon God or the God of that whole world. Like, what's the point of any other legendary? Yeah, it's like I kind of wish they just did like one or two legendaries per. Because it, like the way that you know they had it fun. Now there's like sixty in like something legendaries, right? Yeah, I mean you could find like Lugia and Ho Oh in uh, their irrespective versions at forty. You know. Like in gold, really? I'm pretty sure Ho is at 40 and Lugia 70 and vice versa. Yeah. You know, that's that's kind of shot. <laughs> the dogs, too, in gold and silver, they're all 40. So, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's not like catching a Mewtwo and you have to be at least level 80 to fight a <laughs> yeah. level 70 Pokemon. Which that was cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, having four legendaries or five legendaries, which started in Gen 2 per series, is fine. But now... It's just like more and more and more and more. Yeah, and it's it's, and they all do more epic stuff. Like yeah. You find, you, oh, that's how the universe was made. Oh wait, no, that's how it was yeah. made. Oh wait, no, these five. Made like it, yeah. anything after Arceus inter- is isn't legendary anymore because you have exactly or uh, Gerantia, Giranta, whatever. Giratina. 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 Yeah. All right, that's basically the devil in the Pokemon world. Like yes. you have God and the devil. Like you don't need other legendaries because they are literal 
gods. Like, they're not just like, oh, fantasy Pokemon, you know, like, this is legendary, you know, they've been around for however. They're fucking God and the devil. I agree. They just cancel out any other yeah. Mega Evolution or any any sort of legendary. And that's what um, I, I didn't like about the anime was the legendaries either because, you know, they were never really explained and you, and you kind of led to believe there's like one of each maybe mm-hmm. but like the i mean ash battled that one his charizard beat an articuno you know? yeah like that dude had an articuno can we explain that yeah oh, how did he get yeah it? and then the one dude did you oh, see a loogie and a baby loogie in one episode so like hey let's talk about that and how, yeah. how does that relate to pokemon 2000 does he not remember meeting that loogie like he never yeah. even talks about that yeah that's the thing the continuity's kind of messed up same with mewtwo mewtwo's mm. in an episode i think he's in a different movie or I, f- I forget what the deal is with him but like yeah they don't talk about th- and that was such a big thing as a kid like oh that's mewtwo that's it we're good mm-hmm. and now they see him again and it's like nothing happened yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, there's a lot of great things that doesn't that don't make sense technically. Like, I know I'm like going out of branch here, but if you look at the old Universal Monster movies, there's like the continuity in there is like awful. But like, so like I like, but like in Pokemon in general though, it's still the same characters. That's the huge problem is that like you can get away with that in some movies because it's different characters. Right. But like in Pokemon, it's still Ash. It was Ash in the Pokemon movie, and it's Ash in the Pokemon anime. So it's kind of hard to get past that. And I don't. I just like to, I, I know it's a show for kids, but like, I just would like a little more explanation of the background of the character of Ash. Like, he just keeps doing it. He would be the Pokemon master if he took, you know, his original team or, you know, got the best mm. ones along the way and like just kept training them. But he's got to really, I mean, I would be way more epically interested in, in him with like one of his more original teams or his original guys becoming like the best ever and then maybe like getting to the top and then like hey maybe training someone under him yeah him yeah to, you know instead of him like getting a crappy team training it up and losing the championship every year yeah that's the thing and it's like, but, like it, it's it makes thing. no sense that he would lose at any point right like, like I, I don't want to say we're getting old like it really was what it is like and i get why ash has a new team every time one because of new pokemon but two because there's a new generation of kids watching it so it's like it's gonna be it's a new series for them, even though it's in season twelve or whatever. Yeah, but if you think about it, he should be the most knowledgeable person in the Pokemon world. And he does still doesn't know shit. Uh, yeah, because he basically knows has the same knowledge or more of every single professor in every single region. That and yeah, he. I'm pretty like, sure starting out, Oak is like, yo, there's one fifty, and then yeah. like next year, oh shit, we just found a hundred more. Oh shit, we just found like oh, there's a region that we're connected decade, to yeah, that it has a more decade, Pokemon. They like looked to their neighbors, you know. What yeah. is the deal with that? How did that guy not, you know, he was like one of the most respected Pokemon professors. So do the other guys not know about the one fifty in Kano, or what's the deal? Was it like a post-apocalyptic world, which is some theories? What's going on there? It's kind of, it's where I'm at. Yeah, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense for people who followed the show. It's a show, and that's kind of how I feel too. It's like I kind of like I'm sure we all feel that way. It's like like they never really cater to the ones, and I don't think they thought Pokemon was gonna cater to people. Like I don't think they thought people were gonna get as t- deep as we are as we it. are yeah. with it, and, and that, they got lazy with it. They were just like, oh, problem. we're making money, just whatever. Yeah, they'll like it here. Let's put some stuff. That's where out. the dollar spoke. But and the we're thing sitting is, here like, damn. <laughs> yeah, it's it sucks. I mean, like just because, and I know it's just a show, and I know it's just. It's well, Pokemon, that's but like, hey, like that—that that was part of like that's 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 how I met some of my friends. Oh, dude, well, that was the my problem first with that is and first played game. Yeah, yeah I'll never forget. Me right and Paul there. Martin would play gold and silver trade and all the time, like like that. Like we would just hang out for hours. Me and Cassidy with Pokemon cards and just like you name it, man. Like even like when Gen Four came out, we all played and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. so, like it, it's it's more than that. There was a heat. There's like there's there's there. We had, we kind of have a stake in it in a little bit in a I, way. Just, I thought I was, I was emotionally invested in it. Yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> I I that's lie. that's where the divide is between Nintendo and four kids who are you know producing the anime. Oh right. Like right. I'm sure four right. kids just like took over, but Nintendo's like, all right, we'll work on the games. You guys handle the anime. Yeah. Which is probably where a lot yeah. of the divide and when comes they in. Did, Nintendo storylines did. I mean, the games in the Pokemon, the story in the Pokemon games, I would say, definitely have advanced. I would say they're yeah. better stories. They work on that. Keeps you interested. I mean, I was playing Gen Six, thought I was gonna hate it, and I played a little longer than I thought because of the storyline. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's very formulaic, but still, they still try to breathe like some fresh air into which it I, every time. Which I give them respect for, definitely. 
But at the end of the day, hey, I guess it kind of sucks because, like, nothing's ever going to hit me the way. Oh, dude, when Gold and Silver were coming out, remember those previews? Yeah. Remember seeing Don Fan in the first Pokemon movie? You're like, what is that thing? Yeah. You know what everything yeah. is, but you never saw that. And nothing's ever going to I mean, they were feeling. previewing Gold and Silver when we first got the gen- first generation over here with the first episode of Pokemon. Because technically, I don't oh, know if you You're right. You're right. That technically, because you see Ho and. Yeah. That I technically though, uh, that's not the first anime. I don't think, right? It's the first one I saw. I don't it's know. the first one that that we saw, but I don't. Th- I don't know if it was the first anime to be produced. I know, or you know what it is. It might have been the first anime produced, but I think there was a manga in uh, Japan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's... I know there's still a manga in Japan. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the, what it, what was first, but. It follows red and blue and green or red and green. Yeah, the yeah. the manga and the anime don't really cross over except for the Pokemon and some characters. And some characters. I know. Yeah. I know Pikachu still is like big in the manga. Like I could see that. He's yeah. From when stable. I from when I from when I was kid because they didn't because they when they brought it over they wouldn't call it manga at that point like even though there was still manga. Is it pronounced manga or manga? I mean I don't know we're all white. And well, yeah. Cares. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um. But yeah, like they didn't even say it. Like it, it, it just they, it almost looked like a regular comic book. But I know mm. for but I know because the animation style, it was based off the manga. Yeah. So mm. again, it's just it, there was that that there was I don't know if there was a, that, that just tells me that even from even in the beginning, 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 beginning I accidentally struck gold because like I don't even think there was a proper plan in the beginning with everything. As far mm-hmm. as because it's because it, and like and how could you do that with something so big? That's what I'm saying. Too. Yeah, like, it's not 100 percent their there, fault. They probably just threw him in there and was like, "We'll get to it." <laughs> and yeah, they got to it, which is really cool. But um, I don't know. To bring up a a new point, like how did you guys feel? Because I got a loaded question, you know, a loaded answer for it. How did you guys feel about um? Fuck, hold on. Origins. Okay, let's talk about Origins. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one to talk about. I liked Origins up until Mega Charizard. See, I... Yeah, it didn't have to do that. There was literally <laughs> no need for me. that because I'm pretty sure that didn't happen in the early version of the manga or the game or anything. I wish it was a series so bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my so gosh. Bad. The yeah. four-episode thing is awful. Like, it was... I, I It could have been a 40-episode story arc. And I would be following that like fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the, the fights were sick. That fight between Charizard and Blastoise is one of the best Pokemon battles I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was great. the coolest thing. Yeah, yeah it's, it is awesome. Like and dude, that like fight when, in um when Gary and Ash yeah. in the in the anime that mm-hmm. is still to this day like the best thing I've ever seen and I was older for that you know I went yeah. back and watched that and that was so epic that whole fight is cool I, I agree but um I guess like I I was gonna say before and I fucking totally forgot about it how do you guys like feel about um like the replay value of the games I mean like people give it a lot of shit but. I love I love that you can just constantly go back and you know do a new whole style. To yeah. Them. Well, it's one of those things. It's like Pokemon's always been a game that's been easy to pick up but hard to master. So it appeals to everybody. And that's always right. been that's always been Nintendo's niche. Like they've always had games like I can like I could never get into like game like I never get into MOBAs, games like like Heroes of the Storm or mm-hmm. like you know, like I like sometimes like even like online shooters or like certain video games like or games like The Witcher, like as great as those games are, and that's not a knock, they're hard to jump into. Like they're not really like beginner friendly. Like Nintendo's always made games that are beginner friendly, but like rewarding t- for mastering. And that's always been the appeal. Yeah, and that's, that's and a hard thing to do. That's a hard yeah. thing to do. And Pokemon, and even though I'm not a fan of the later games, they still do it right. They do. They yeah. definitely do. And I agree with that. Yeah, I mean it's even if it's the same formula every time i still enjoy it no matter what like whether i'm playing yeah, the official releases or fucking uh, rom hacks or like fan made ones which also have the same formula they base it just on that doesn't matter i'm still enjoying myself every time definitely yeah you know with just some minor you know like dislikes like the mega evolutions like yeah i get it okay yeah like it's you know some of the fan ones you still have to do it Sure, they have some. They do have some cooler mega evolutions, but they still have like an abundance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's the same thing every time. But I still enjoy it because you know, either the Nintendo ones they switch up the story a little bit. You know, it's the same thing. Ten year old, 
has to go defeat basically like a mafia type thing or two mafia type things. Which was sick when we were kids because it made you feel empowered as a child. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. It did feel like you had some say in the world. Yeah. And then, you know, you do that, then you catch all the Pokemon, you meet some legendary ones to help you out. You know, you fill out the Pokedex for your professor or whatever. That's fine. You know, it's the same thing every time. I don't care that it is because I still enjoy doing that. It's just how they write the story. Yeah. They do better. And, you know, like, one of the, the replay value is going through with different Pokemon that you normally don't use or different types that you normally don't use. And you could literally make a new team every time. You can, and you could find there's, guys you, like, never would have thought you would use. You'd be like, oh, that fits my style. I like there's an guy. endless combination there is. of teams you could use. You can do, like, solo runs with just, like, I'm just going to use my Charmander throughout the whole entire game. That's what's cool. Nobody else. Because, like, if you always yeah. wanted to be, like, a solo type kind of guy, because that was always the thing for me. Like, I didn't know. I always thought being, like, a one, two type kind of guy or having a theme mm-hmm. would have been sick, but it was, like, always so hard to pull off because, like, you can't always you weren't find a gym the leader. guys, you know? Yeah, you weren't a gym <laughs> leader, too. Well, yeah, and, too, like, I mean, that's that's how you that's how you win against the gym leaders is – because they that's, that's your variety dis- that, yeah that's that's their disadvantage is their lack of variety mm-hmm. that's why gary is so cool in uh silver and gold mm-hmm. and crystal because like when you fight gary like it's the first time you're, you're fighting like a matched a, a, you know a, a team like that and yeah then you fight ash right after I, that giovanni didn't have a mixed bag no giovanni no, was all ground oh yeah he was kangaskhan yeah who has earthquake and Fisher, yeah so like whatever yeah, other than that. He's got a Rhyhorn, Rhydon, Needle King, Needle Queen, and I think uh, either a Tauros or a Kangaskhan. I think it depends on the version. If, I don't remember. I can't remember either. I'm pretty either. sure the gym leaders have the same ones. Every that, time. That's basically it, yeah. yeah. Like, for, from version to version, it's, you know, they're the same. Yeah, I know that, but I just thought maybe Giovanni was another exception besides Gary. No. With the exception of the Kangaskhan or Tauros, he had – it was – all ground and then one or two normal. Yeah. He might have had a rapid dash. Rapid dash. No, he never rapid. No, he didn't. No? Oh, that, that was, was uh, that was the that I was, was the seventh badge. Then. Um, Lane has an, a rapid dash. Yeah. yeah, but that's the thing about that is um, it it would just be cool to be like, oh, I'm gonna go about this as like, you know, I liked all the horned ones. Like I thought Rhyperior was sick. I thought Nido King was sick. I think you know Torterra doesn't have horns, but he's sick. Taros is sick. Balfour mm-hmm. is sick using all them and finding different ways to like cover all your bases with like a similar type or theme is like the coolest, you know, creative thing to do. Yeah. But one of those guys ever in like your region or like, you know, you, you have to have a few badges before you even get one. So you have to train something shitty. You don't want to use mm-hmm. until you get there. It's, it's always like end game stuff. You have to be doing that. And that's what sucks about going through the game. It's hard to go through the game one type without using something you don't want to use. Yeah. Like I don't want to like, as cool as like Primeape is, like I don't want to be using Mankey. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan. Like, yeah. I'm not a fan. Like I don't want Primeape either. Like yeah, you don't want to Primeape. Either. That's why like and like with Pokemon Go, I don't know much about it. It's Nintendo's first mobile like official mobile game, but so I don't know how it's gonna go. But like you know, for years people have been screaming like, why can't we have a legitimate Pokemon MMORPG where everything they, is accessed? Yeah, I think they would make a killing on an MMO. Everybody basically wants one that's not, you know, five years old or whatever. Yeah. People are. Anybody age who's played our age and even younger, people who have played more than one generation and who play like online gaming, like whether it's like Call of Duty or fucking Smash Brothers Online. Yeah. To have Pokemon online like that, other than just like an online battle from 3DS to 3DS. Oh, if they did it right, dude. It like would an take MMO out. Wow. would be. Nothing can do yeah. That. Yeah. I would play the shit out of that. I'd spend <laughs> fucking days and days and days yeah, on it. Yeah, I don't understand because it's just like I maybe like you can say like you can say oh they're waiting until Pokemon like needs like one last stride to be saved and then like then they'll do it. But, at the but same that's time, what Pokemon that, Go seems like it is. That's because they're know, they're I putting in like, like fifty million dollars into bringing it over here. Yeah, something I think like that. Like the Pokemon's last stride, if it's gonna be anything, if it's not the MMO. And if they don't do one, that's that's such a shame because we've been waiting so mm-hmm. long for it. Would be like, I'd pay $20, uh, $20 a month to play it. Easily. Yeah, definitely. And I, I would say it would be like a game that incorporates all the regions now and you can go to all of them. Yeah. And, like, the level cap is... You know, yeah, possible. possible. And you know what too? It's like, 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 and like, not even abandoned the the portable aspect of how Pokemon always has been, but like, almost like take a break. 
you yeah, know, just yeah. just try something try something else. else. Like do the MMO yeah. and then like bring you it know, to a fucking console. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like that. Not that Wii U. would be the easiest Pokemon way. MMO on a on the NX or something. Yeah, yeah. Would do, that'd be the easiest way to make their MMO. Just bring it to a console. Now, like, and that's yeah. the thing though. It's like imagine like they announced M- N- uh, NX at E3 2016, which they're probably going to. Mm-hmm. And like, oh, it's not a launch game, but we have what you've been asking for in development, and it's coming to NX. Yeah. NX would fly off the shelves. Well, PS4 oh, yeah. just did that with Final Fantasy VII, and I was done with video games, and now I'm buying a PS4 out of nowhere because that's like the second game I played. Now imagine they did that to Pokemon. Are you buying uh, a PS4 now? Like when FF7 remake comes? It's going to be like two or three years probably. No, it's going. It's, they said next year or the year after, I think. Really? Yeah, I heard it was gonna. I heard it was pretty. I don't know. I don't trust video game release dates just because, like, they said, because Final Fantasy 15, it's like half the people working on that game are also working on Kingdom Hearts 3, and, th- and since now it's a remake of a Final Fantasy game, I'm sure some of those same people are working on Final Fantasy 7. And like, how many people can you switch around in a, in a, in a like in a development yeah, studio? Maybe. You're probably right about that, but I mean, Kingdom Hearts 3 is like pretty much done, right? No, I wouldn't be surprised if that game didn't come out till. Holiday 2017. It's been really? delayed multiple times. Yeah. Oh, shit. I don't know. I I, I, I I heard about it so long ago and didn't keep up with it. I just figured I, I, it was coming I, out soon. I've been, like, I follow video games. Like, I understand, like, like development, like, to a certain extent to the point where I can kind of guess. Mm-hmm. And, like, I would not be surprised if I you don't even see it at E3. Like, well, Final Fantasy VII has, like, one year to come out. Or else, like I'm not too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not like not not yeah. the burst your bubble, but like I would be, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like two years. Because I'll beat it in like a month and then just return it. So like, yeah, yeah. Uh, another thing that they're planning on Nintendo's planning on bringing over is that Pokemon Fighter game or whatever that Pokemon Tournament. Which yeah, Pokemon Tournament. Act, did you hear? Looks cool. Did you hear the bad news about it though? No, they they're pulling out of arcades in Japan because the arcades are not doing very well. So I don't know what that says about the game. Uh, it could be two things though. It could be one because arcades just aren't popular anymore. No one goes to no one goes to the arcade to play video games. Yeah, True. You're, if you're not gonna leave your house to play video games anymore. Yeah. That's that. No, granted though, arcades are still a little more popular in Japan, but it's still kind of a dying art. And only the only the the only games that survive in our in arcades really are that's the where, where there are arcades, I guess, are like competitive fighting games. Competitive fighting games, DDR. Guitar Hero. Yeah. But now they're even starting even to put, Guitar like, Hero, really. it did well when it first got introduced to arcades. Yeah, but there hasn't been one since. But, like, shooters, like the, like the gun shooters and stuff like that, it's not really... Those are dying off. Yeah. you And, like, not even... Not, not to mention, like, too. Arcades are suffering a lot, it's even over, over here. here. No, even over here, over there, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, yeah. they started setting up mobile games, like iOS and Android games, into arcade cabinets. Yeah. Like, you can go to Jank's Arcade right now. You can play Cut the Rope, Fruit Ninja, Angry Birds, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. shit like that. They each, every arcade on Jank's yeah. has those. So that's why I'm saying, like, I don't think, like, a lot of people say, oh, the game's terrible probably, so that's why they pull it from arcades. I'm like, uh, no, because I guarantee you if, you know, Mortal Kombat X was released for arcades, it would have been pulled probably within a month being released. And or Mortal Kombat X did really well sales wise, and yeah. it's still doing really good. And it's even it was even yeah. At, it's not the game; it's the it's the culture. It's the culture. Okay, like culture. and like to be honest, like why am I gonna drive five minutes away to pay uh, fifty dollars to pay fifty dollars for? Or I'm sorry. Why am I gonna drive five minutes away to pay twenty dollars for a day of like a game I really want to play? Where I can pay sixty dollars and play whenever I want. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, if you know, the Pokemon tournament comes out over here. It won't be. I think they'll change it from arcade. They'll port it over to. They're gonna port it to Wii U. They they'll, that. they'll port it to Wii U, and that's, oh, yeah, that's, that's where announced. that's where it will be successful. It's not, not an arcade game at all. There might be like some like cool. There might be some like demo arcade ones that like like like, like they'll show it like E3 or something like that. Mm-hmm. But as far as like the actual game, like you're not gonna go. You're not gonna go to the movie theaters and see Pokemon Tournament. You're, it's gonna be Wii U. Like that's yeah. what it's gonna be on. I'm gonna get it for Wii U. I think the game looks sweet. I, this is like, I, like this is something I like. I have like, con- like not. Oh, it's not something I've wanted, but now that I see it, I'm kind of glad it exists. It's one of those things that you didn't know you wanted until, until you, you saw it. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's like that happens a lot with. Like, I mean, like any instance of like, it happens with some casting like. Um, 
I saw Sicario like two weeks ago or whatever, and I was talking to Anthony Delia about it, and he goes, I'm – and I was like, oh, Emily Blunt, like, kicked ass in this and Edge of Tomorrow. Like, she's, like, established that she can kick ass. And he goes, that's why I want her as Captain Marvel. And I'm like, shit. Now I want that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I never would have thought of that. But now I want that really bad. That's a good – that's a really good point. And, like, that's how Pokken is. The Pokken yeah. Tournament. Pokin, it's, yeah. Pokken Tournament looks cool. I mean, it doesn't – I just can't tell by how it looks whether it's going to be a competitive fighting game mm-hmm. or how like Mortal Kombat. You, it's not like not Mortal Kombat changed. Mortal Kombat used to be a fighting game that you could just play with your friends and goof around, and it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't really like. It, it wasn't. It wasn't catered to the competitive players. I don't know if that's going to be Pokemon Tournament or not. I can't tell by the gameplay. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's gonna, it's if it's gonna be like a, a like a, like you're gonna see that like evolution. You know, something like that. I don't know. Pokemon is, uh, it's, it's in a place where I don't really know. I, if po- if they stopped Pokemon now, like 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 not like all together, I'd be sad at I'd be sad at that. But like if they stop Pokemon, you know, just for a while, just to take a break, or if they were like, you know what, like the last like the games don't sell bad though. That's the thing, so it'll never mm-hmm. stop. But yeah, it won't. And, I and they still sell like, Pokemon cards and stuff too. You know, they put out Black and White, and then put out Black and White Two, and that still sold great, which was like the same fucking game with just a different, you know, yeah. slightly different storyline. And I, you know, I I bought both of them, and I played both of them, and I'm, you know, I didn't like either. Of them. Yeah, I don't I like either. them. I couldn't. Yeah, I out. did not. Yeah, yeah I do the same thing. Out. I didn't like playing either of them either. Yeah. yeah. Playing six right now. X and I'm playing X, and because I couldn't miss out. Yeah. I postponed it. I I uh, revolted against it for a while, but you know, fuck it. Playing so it. I never played Gen four. I went from Gen three, stopped. Heart gold, Soul Silver. You, you never played Diamond or Pearl. No. I recommend there at least okay. Dude, Joe really had Diamond and Pearl. Remember Joe really bought a used Nintendo DS at GameStop that one time? That was for Joe Heart Gold and yeah. Soul Silver. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean I'll tell you what kind of ruined it from Pokemon, if anything, not Mega Evolutions, would be the competitiveness of it. You know, the the ladder system to it. I wouldn't say, you know, that was a bad thing for them to add. Mm. I just I personally can't get on board with that. You know, like I grew up using my my team as a kid was like a sand slash yeah a scyther a charizard and all his moves were like fire moves mm-hmm. you know it was just like badass and then you know you grow up and you get smarter but now it's like well you can't use that one and you can't use this one here and then that moves banned and then it's just kind of got like a little yeah no and i agree because like once once like there's a huge competitive aspect to it um, um, it's just it's not, not as fun, fun anymore because, because the, the, the one thing Pokemon, thing Pokemon did, did right from the very beginning is made you feel like you were the best. Yeah. yeah. And when, like and once like, you start like you getting like once you start getting like you know super nerd like like no 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 like this Pokemon actually sucks because blah 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 this it's like well now I'm now I'm now I'm not the best in my own little world you kind of just screwed it up for me. I hope you die. Like and we we would know if anyone we were there for the beginning of it along with many others, but I feel like we were a perfect age for it. Like, we were an age that could have stuck with it, but we kind of understood what was going on, but we were, you know, there to let it catch mm-hmm. us. And we saw it grow up, and it grew up with us, so we kind of know, like, what did hurt it and what did not hurt it. And I don't just mean us three. I mean anyone who was there for the beginning and, you know, kept playing, kept it with it for a while, really understands it to the point where like competitive people are going to look back and be like, oh, you guys are just butthurt because Gen 1 is over with. Mm. No, it's not it. It's like I like Gen 2, I like Gen 3, Gen 4 I didn't hate, Gen 5 eh, I didn't like, Gen 6 was okay. Um, I'm not just butthurt about it. I just feel like a lot of the, you know, what gave it heart and what connected me to it was kind of really demolished by a lot of marketing and a lot of um a lot of some bad decisions a lot of bad decisions. yeah but if the thing is though was it bad decisions not for the company, not for the company but for longtime like, fans for the for longtime fans and like in my opinion the dignity of what it represented to me yeah but like that's the thing though like i have hopes for the future though um I mean, like, there's like, and, like, if we, if you really want to look back, we can look back at so many different franchises that went through crap, and then, mm-hmm. 
ended up coming back on top. I mean, like, when they rebooted Superman in the 1980s, like, Superman had a power where he could, like, shake his face and, like, change the way how he looked like. Like, it was, like, retarded. Like, it was yeah. stupid. So, it's, like, I think there's going to be a time where Pokemon's, like, like, no, hey, listen, like, we're listening. Like, this is it. Like, or Star Wars did it. Like, Star Wars yeah. is doing it now. So, like, I have hope for the future. I just kind of, and this sucks. It's, like, I, I don't like saying this about things I love like entertainment wise but it's like i kind of hope it kind of dies a horrible I've death that for a while. i hope it dies like a real bad death like it's like wow like, wow, like this, this is shitty, is shitty. like yeah. how did this happen and who let this come out and it's like all right whoa, 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 whoa we gotta save this like we gotta do all, all our best resources what have people been wanting like get it out there let's do it that's why i'm glad like i never bought anything like i, I never bought a ds i used becca's Glad I never bought a 3DS to I never play them. One either. Same here. Just I'm always borrow. Don't always don't feel like borrowing one. one. So like I'm glad I just stopped. No, I see. I the I, last. I, I love my 3DS. The I've, last I've one. Played. No, no, no. Yeah. It's not like I didn't. I didn't feel like buying one, so I'm not gonna go buy the new Pokemon too. Like I yeah. just yeah. I don't usually buy a system just for one specific game. I um, never do either, but I also play. That's usually only. That's all. It's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm totally different. Yeah. Than, you know, but like, I'm not. I'm glad I didn't. For their, their like the newer games, versions so. of the game. Um, the Ruby and Sapphire remakes. I was close to buying at least a 2DS. I I, I was here, about actually, to, and yeah, then I was like, too. Nah, I'll think about it. And then I just never got around to it. Like I just, it never compelled me enough to go buy one. To to yeah. play it, you know what? You know what? RPG series though is really really good on the DS and 3DS is the Mario and Luigi games. Those are really good. And I, it's really not that I'm against combat. buying them. It's just yeah. I'm saying that Pokemon never. Yeah, no, the new ones didn't get, compel me no, enough. I, I get to, what you're saying, but like I'm just saying like it's all like the point I'm trying to make is like Pokemon is not the number one RPG I go to now. Like yeah, that's how far not. it's fallen for me. Like I like I'm playing Mario and Luigi uh, Dream Team, and it's so much fun. And it's like it's much deeper than Pokemon. Like, yeah. Even though technically you're the same two characters, um, and it's like ah, oh, Pokemon never really like mm -hmm. extended to that level. Like, yeah, like oh. the the Pokemon I play now were either emulators of past versions up to like Gen. For 3. nostalgia factor though, and I don't think a kid who's into Pokemon now could really go back and play those. No, because the mechanics are That's very different. Like, but I've seen the the reviews on the Gen One games from like you know younger kids on forums and stuff like that, and they're like, "How could you guys even play Gen One? Like the mechanics, is like yeah. yeah. Well, the, and it's like dude, at the time they were great, but them. yeah, that's yeah. not why I go back and play I it. I can still go back and play that way easier than any Gen Five or Gen Six. Yeah, I think they're better still. Like even if I were to play them now, even if I never played Pokemon and I still played them now, just trying to have like an open mind, I still think those earlier ones are better. The simplicity of the yeah, concept. it's sometimes mm. less is more. Less there, exactly. Yeah. That's one of the situations. The, and like, but like, the, like even like I just brought up before about Mario and Luigi having a deeper having a deeper RPG system yet still being easy to access. That's what Pokemon could have done, and it never really did. They just would add more. Mm -hmm. Like they always added more shit. They always changed stuff you like. I mean, no, Gen Two was awesome, and Gen Three fixed a lot to it. Added the you know the experience bar thing. Was Gen Two added yeah. the uh, breeding the types, the breeding, like all stuff that could have been in Gen One, and I would have been gung ho. For yeah. It. But then, yeah, once you got into it, um, like EV yields, you know, EV you know, and IVs, like I just never bothered with that, that kind of breeding. Like those people. I just need to chill. You can't even talk to about the franchise. Like, yeah. the fact that they would spend days breeding, you know, hundreds of eggs to get this certain EV or IV. I was just like, no, I'll just take it like this. Yeah. If I want a second one, then I'll go breed it and then yeah, be happy with it. Your heart isn't in it. Like, yeah. you see that Pokemon, you catch that Pokemon, that's your guy. Yeah, exactly. Bro, you can't just be like, all right, well, I'm going to make you have, like, a thousand kids and pick the best Yeah, yeah. Fight. No, I like, that's sleep. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't breed children and kill them all and then, like, pick the one that's Let them go in the wild. Yeah. All right, Johnny, yeah, you didn't meet up. this IV because you're, you know, you're still, like, three foot tall. So we're going to go out to this farm over here. I'll throw you the ball. Just keep going. And then you get in the car and yeah. leave the kid. You never, you never throw the ball. Yeah, you know. I think it, 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 it could have been there could have been ways for them to really like not just add new types, but it's like oh, by the way, like 
we kind of added a feature to where you can almost where you can kind of see like you can like you can uh determine whether you get hit or not like mm -hmm. and see how it works like experiment like the, the it just the the experimentation kind of really went in a direction that i felt like hurt the series and i don't know it just it's one, it's one of those things, things that the graphics, graphics like, better like better graphics, graphics, never really were a big thing for me because my imagination was so yeah in yeah. My head. I don't wow. even like I, I don't even like the look of the new Pokemon it, games. It, I don't like their graphics. No man, no. Like Gen Six's graphics were like a lot of what that, so much kept me from playing that game, but that was one of them. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like when you sit down and you think about your game and you think about your team and you're that into it, you're not like oh I relate more to it because the graphics are better. Yeah, like, I don't give a shit about, about that shit. Like you're. But yeah, yeah. It's the th yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. Like it's like it's just like less, less is more. Again, less is more. It's like playing those old games. It's like I don't want to like like compare it to this, but it's like I almost feel like almost the equivalent of like reading a book. Like when you read a book, your imagination goes wild because like you imagine what the characters look like, you imagine what they sound like, you imagine they do this. So like you know, like a lot of people like were pissed off, like like get pissed off at movies sometimes. Like that's not how I imagine the character. Well, no, that's how the writer who wrote the movie imagined the character. But, like, Ash, like, or not Ash, but, like, Red or Blue or whatever. It's, like, even though, like, there's kind of a simple character design and, like, you still have, they, they have their personality, which a book does, you can kind of, you kind of imagine, like, what, like, you, you imagine there's, yeah, you imagine yourself and that person. You imagine what their voice sounds like. You don't know their color of hair. Like, oh, it could be, like, something like that. You know, it's... Mm -hmm. I, I felt I, like it was totally way more rewarding in that aspect. aspect. Agreed. Agreed. You can. That's literally an RPG right there, as opposed to like the new games where everything's spelled out for you. It's all colorful. It's to me, you know, it's great for a game itself. Mm -hmm. Just not Pokemon to me, you know. And so I'm not knocking the games as games. I'm knocking them. Like that's not what I signed up for getting into this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, that's all I got. No, really. yeah, and I agree. I mean, I listen. I still love the franchise. I'll never not love it. I wouldn't be talking about this right now if we did. Yeah. We wouldn't be this into it if we didn't love it. You know. Exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. And like, listen. And of all the negative things we said, there are so many positives. More positive than our negatives, but but the negatives have what kept me at bay for a while. You know. Agreed. Totally agreed. I mean, there's times I still will sit down late at night, and like you know. Uh, a good method of falling asleep would be like, oh, you know, what would I do in the first adventure? Mm -hmm. Who would I pick? Uh, what game would I play? If, what region would I be in? And what would my final team be? Yeah. And it's gotten down to like a final team. You know? Who do you think out of our friends would be the worst Pokemon trainer? Justin. Yeah, definitely. Justin or Donnie. I feel like maybe Justin would follow the rules and get to where he had to. I feel like Donnie would just... No, I think Justin's Pokemon would beat him up because they wouldn't obey him. I think, It'd be like I think Joe, Evan, Evan, and Robbie. Joe really, Evan, and Robbie. I think Robbie could figure it out. I think Evan is good in Pokemon now. He plays I think now. Evan would be fine. Really? Who, who are you saying, Joe? I think Joe really would be the number one worst Pokemon trainer. Of all. He His Pokemon would kill him. Yeah, he died. Uh, like he'd be, totally he'd be yelling at it like a fucking. Just tell, can you just sing sleep real fast? Like <laughs> that would be his best fucking friend. Yeah. Joe would, have, Joe would have a drowsy. I think that's. I really think that's what he would have, and that would suck. I hate Joe. And he would like open up to the drowsy, but the drowsy would be like, "What the hell?" <laughs> it would fuck. Yeah. Him. <laughs> It'd put him to sleep, eat his dream, and then just leave him. Yep. He would die. I think. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, I think Robbie would be all right. Dude, it would be um, it's the same way with Donnie and everything, you know? I think Donnie would probably be better than we'd give him credit for. You think so? I think so. Um, because he can, he'd be able to connect with his Pokemon like Ash does. You're right. He'd okay. be able to do that. Right. Yeah. And then, I like, fact, Donnie, I, can, I get that argument. Very but good. Robbie, like, he'd have to get his Pokemon to respect him, and I doubt they would. Because it's Robbie. Dude, Unless, like, why is this Ratatat rat telling us what to do? That's, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That they would do that. And then, like, he'd have to jump in there. Somebody would throw a Pokeball at him thinking he's a Ratatat. I think Justin Justin never having played the games would be the number one worst friend. Yeah. yeah. He'd would, be like, 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 if you had, like, pick, like, if we had to, like, draw straws, like, like, all right, you have one friend to go on an adventure with, like, any of you guys, like, would be like, would be like, like, even Paul Martin, because he used to play back in the day. Like, that's a lot of people don't know. Like, dude, he used to play all the time. He would actually be all right, too. But, like, dude, if I had, like, Justin, like, I love Justin. I would take him anywhere else. But I was like, dude, as, like, for a Pokemon adventure, I'd be like, no. Like, now I have to teach somebody something. Like, <laughs> 
you feel like wait so i pick like one of these so wait wait yeah. like i just throw the ball like at them like <laughs> yes just, yes, just fucking, throw fucking throw it dude throw it, like but he'd ask you it five times in five different yeah. texts even though you're sitting next to him yeah you know he would get it he would <laughs> but he'd one. break it up <laughs> number two is him playing it right now would be hilarious because he wouldn't know the type advantage the best part is now, this is recording yeah, he's, gonna he's gonna hear, hear this. this yeah if he, if he even it, listens definitely. That don't no, tell him and let's see if he says anything. <laughs> but imagine he listens and just doesn't say anything anyway, and he like kind of like, like, like harvests it. Inside yeah, but it, he'll bring up, he'll be like, or just like blows up. No, a you know what he'll do is <laughs> he'll he'll bring it up in like a subtle way. He'll be like, so like if you were to go on a Pokemon journey, like who yeah. would you bring? That's how he would bring it. Because like I would bring that one. He too. wouldn't be like, I heard you guys talking about it. Like, for people who he wouldn't come for people who don't know our friend Justin, he's like one of the nicest people in the world. But we just constantly make fun of him. Like, he's never beat Red or Blue. Yeah, he's never beat Pokemon Red or Blue, so that's really what gets his kind of mad. Yeah, so he deserves it for this conversation. In this instance. Yeah. But, like, if you were to see a wild Robbie in the grass as a Pokemon trainer, I would, I would <laughs> throw a Pokeball at it. He'd probably try to deposit it in my PC and Apple Watch. All right, we're getting a little off track, though. So I, I mean, think we I basically think, covered everything. Yeah, we basically covered everything. I feel like we can end it off. Um, is there any final words you guys want to say? I mean, I, you know, uh, I would like to thank you guys for having me on here. And thank like, you for coming on. I mean, venting this out. There's no other place I would, you know, those have been inside for like 17 years now. Those thoughts. So it's great to just get well, them. Out. You're always welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Pat. Anything you have to say? I, I don't. I don't really have anything else to say, but. No, I think everything's been said. Yeah. All right, well, guys, thanks for listening to Awesome Sunday Show. Uh, remember to rate, like, comment, subscribe. Um, also, too, follow us on Twitter. I am at Less Than Connor. Um, at Rick Pat MCN. Uh, at Crucial Den. Yeah, so, uh, you know, give us a follow. Tweet at us. Uh, we always tweet about the show. Uh, me and Pat, uh, mainly, I'm sure, Dentino will probably tweet about the show because he's been on it. Um, but, yeah, like I said, rate, comment, subscribe. Put it on blast. Yeah, tell all your friends. Uh, taking back Sunday reference lol um, so um, yeah have a good one have a great Sunday bye peace